Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD88-EXB300-K HDMI Matrix and Extender Kit. This product allows you to very easily share eight different HDMI media sources with six remote locations up to 300 feet away in full 4K ultra high definition resolution over a single CAT6 or CAT7 cable. The product also provides two additional local connections for video output here at the primary site for a total of eight inputs and eight outputs. Also included with the kit are infrared blasters for each of the remote locations that will collect up the remote control signals from that location and send those back digitally over the same LAN cable to the primary site so you can actually control the content you're watching. The matrix is also split into audio and video so you can actually mix and match the video you're sending with different audio to each of the locations. And you can make the selections of which of the inputs is sent to which of the outputs using the buttons on the front of the unit, the included remote control, or the software provided connected to a computer. Computer. Finally, the product also provides power over cable technology, which means once you plug in the transmitter unit, all the power required for the remote locations is sent over that same LAN cable, which greatly simplifies your wiring. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing just to show you all the components that are included with the kit, and then I'll actually take a closer look at the transmitter and receiver modules and explain the connections and indicators. I'll list the features and functions the product provides, and then I'll come back and actually do a demonstration here to show you just how easy this product will be to use. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open up the box, you'll find the transmitter unit, a power cord for the transmitter unit, an RS-232 connection cable where you can directly connect to it and use the software to control the input versus output. You'll find an infrared remote control, a collection of RS-232 connection blocks. This product can also transfer RS-232 signals over that same LAN connection. You'll find six remote receivers. Each of these are identical. A set of brackets to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. A set of infrared blasters for each of the remote receivers and a set of infrared blasters for the transmitter unit, including one that allows you to extend the infrared remote control signals outside of a cabinet if you need to do that. Also included is a warranty card and a full instruction manual that lists connection diagrams, specifications, and other details you'll need to understand about the product to use it correctly. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at the main components, list the features and functions, and then do the demonstration. The front of the cabinet has an integrated bracketing system with holes perfectly positioned to make this incredibly easy to mount into a standard audio video rack. You'll also find a power button on the right hand side you can use to turn the unit on and off. To the left of that is a menu button with four directional buttons around it. When you tap the menu button you'll enter the configuration settings and you can use these directional buttons to navigate through the menus and make the selections you need. To the left of that is a full digital display that will show you the current status of the matrix as well as confirming configuration steps and changes you've made. On the one side you'll find ventilation slots that are cut into the cabinet and those are designed to keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature during operation. On the other side you'll find two high performance fans that are also used to help with cooling and they'll pull cool air from outside the cabinet through the back of the chassis and out the ventilation slots on the other side again to maintain a temperature that's comfortable for the electronics internally. On the bottom of the unit you'll find additional venting slots for cooling as well as four heavy duty feet that have rubber bushings on the bottom to protect whatever surface you set this down on in case you decide not to mount it into a rack system. On the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, starting on the lower left hand side you'll find eight input ports and these are all full sized HDMI connections labeled HDMI 1 through HDMI 8 and these are used for connecting up the media devices that you'd like to share the content from with your remote locations and your local locations. You can use standard HDMI cables for making that connection. Above each of these ports is a grounding stud that can also be used for strain relief if your cable provides for that. To the right of the input ports are eight output ports, six of which are LAN connections. These are used for your remote locations, which can be up to 300 feet away for 4K media. These are HD based T ports, and you'll use a CAT6 or CAT7 cable to make the connection between the transmitter and each of the receivers. To the left of those are two full-sized HDMI ports that can be used for making a local connection to a monitor here at the primary site with a standard HDMI cable, providing eight full inputs and eight full outputs. Above that are audio connections. Starting on the left is the audio input block, 
You can use an analog left and right 3.5 millimeter connection, an optical connection, or a coax connection. You'll also find eight output connections. The first two offer both an analog left and right and a coaxial. The other six are from your remote locations, and you'll notice there's an RS-232 connection block there because the remote receivers can transfer RS-232 control signals back to the primary site as well over that same LAN connection. And if you want to do that, you can actually connect up here using the connection blocks provided in the kit. But you'll have access to both a left and right analog as well as the coaxial output. Above those connections, you'll find the infrared input and infrared output for the IR blaster kits. You'll connect up the input here, which is the larger receiver, and the output here, which is the smaller receiver. And then there's one other connection here for IR external. If you mount this inside of a cabinet and close the door, it won't be able to receive the remote control signals that you'll need to make changes to the matrix. So there's another infrared receiver provided. You can plug it in here and locate that outside the cabinet to pick up those remote control signals. You'll also find a ground stud here if you need to ground this to earth ground. To the right of those connections are where you'll connect up your computer if you'd like to control this remotely. You have a choice of either adding it to your network or just using a standard LAN connection or an RS-232 DB9 if your computer provides that. Finally, there's an AC input port right over here that's used with the included cabling. You'll plug one end in here, the other end to the AC outlet nearest, and that'll be all the power you need to operate the product. And because this product provides power over cable technology, once you power up the transmitter, all the power required for your remote locations are sent over these same LAN cables, so you don't need a power supply at those remote locations. Inside the kit, you'll find six remote receiver modules that all look exactly like this one. They feature full metal enclosures, which make them very durable and the perfect solution for both residential and commercial installations. On the sides of the module, as well as on the bottom, you'll find a collection of ventilation slots that allow any heat that develops during operation to escape. There are also four feet on the bottom that will protect any surface you set this module down on. On the sides of the modules, you'll find two holes. Those can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount the module up off the ground and out of the way. On the front of the module, there are two LED indicators on the left-hand side, power and ARC. When power is applied to the module, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it checks the electronics. Once it passes that test, it'll light this LED letting you know the module is ready to use. The ARC indicator lets you know that you're using ARC audio, which is a function of HDMI, and you can choose to turn that on by tapping this button right here. On the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, starting on the left you'll find a DC power port. In this case that's not used because this solution uses a technology called power over cable, which means the minute you plug in the transmitter and make the LAN connection back to this port, all the power required for this module is sent over that LAN connection, so this is redundant for this particular product. To the right of that are two infrared blaster ports. These are three and a half millimeter ports that are used with the infrared blaster kit. When you plug those in, it's really important that you plug the larger one into the IR in and the smaller one into the IR out for proper operation. To the right of that is an optical in port that can be used for audio. To the right of that is an HDMI output port, and that's a standard HDMI port that can be connected to a local monitor, and you can enjoy the content at the remote location on that monitor by simply connecting a cable between here and the monitor. To the right of that is another LAN port the HD Base T actually allows you to transport a LAN connection across that same LAN connection from the transmitter. So if you have a LAN connection at the transmitter, you can actually connect up a laptop here and surf the internet through that LAN connection. So it's really nice that it not only extends content where you can enjoy that at the remote location, but also extends your internet. To the right of that is an RS-232 connection. This system can transfer RS-232 signals between the receivers and the transmitter. And to do that, you'll connect the wiring right up here. You can use one of the included wiring blocks to make that easy. Finally, to the right is a service port. It's a micro USB port. Firmware is released later on that improves features or additional functionality. You can actually move the firmware file to this remote receiver by connecting a short cable from here to your computer, transferring the file over to complete the update. To the right of that is a selection switch. That's a factory only switch that's explained in the manual. And the only time you'll need to use that is when you're doing a firmware update. That's pretty much it for the remote receivers. One last thing I wanted to mention is the infrared blaster kits look very similar, but they're actually two different styles of modules, one with a larger head and one with a smaller head. The one with the larger head is actually a receiver, and the one with the smaller head is the transmitter, so it's very important you plug these into the right ports on the remote receivers and on the transmitter. The larger one gets plugged into the IR in port, and the smaller one gets plugged into the IR out port for proper operation. The O-Ray UHD-88-EXB300-K is compatible with a wide variety of HDMI media sources, including DVD players, video cameras, computer systems, media players, 
and streaming devices. The product's features include full support of 4K ultra high definition media content. You can extend the remote receivers up to 300 feet for 4K content and up to 330 feet away for 1080p content. The product is both HDMI 2.0 as well as HDCP 1.4 and 2.2 compliant. It provides the very latest in power over cable technology for simpler wiring and includes an infrared blaster kit for total playback control from the remote locations. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use the 8x8 HDMI matrix and extender kit with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up four small media players that are each displaying a different image to make it really easy to tell them apart. These represent the media devices that I'd like to share the content from with my remote locations and my two local connections. On either side of me, I've got four monitors set up that represent four remote locations. Now this product can fully support six remote locations and two local connections at the same time, as well as eight different media input devices. For today, I'll show you four outputs. In front of me, I have the transmitter module and four remote receiver modules. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the transmitter module, and I'll start by connecting the media sources up to the HDMI my input ports on the back. I've already connected up four cables and I'll simply plug those into the HDMI input ports and these are standard HDMI cables and I always recommend finding the best quality cable you can afford to eliminate any possibility of causing issues with the transmissions downfield to your remote locations. Okay those are connected now we're ready to connect the monitors up to the remote receivers and I've got two of these for each of the monitors. And I'll connect up these two HDMI cables on these two monitors first to the HDMI output port on the back of both of these receivers. And there are two more cables over here. And I'll plug those into the HDMI output ports on these two receivers. Now, one thing that's really unique about the solution is that the transmitter provides power over cable technology, which means you won't need power supplies at the remote location for each of those receivers. All the power required for those modules to operate is sent over the same LAN cable that makes the connection to stream the media content to that location. So it greatly simplifies your wiring. Now that cable can be up to 300 feet for 4K transmission, and it has to be a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable. I'm ready to power up the transmitter, and then I'll connect up the LAN cables. So one single connection is all you need. You'll plug it into a wall outlet, plug it in the back. Now the minute I add power to the transmitter, it immediately starts an internal power and self-test where it's checking all the electronics to make sure everything is working fine. It turned on the cooling fans to keep the electronics nice and comfortable. It's also checking to see if any media devices have been connected to the input, and then it checks the resolution of that media source so it can make whatever adjustments are needed before it transmits it out to the remote locations. Now we're ready. That beep just indicates it passed power on self-test. Now we're ready to connect up our LAN cables. And I have four short CAT6 cables right here, and I'll plug those directly into the LAN ports on the back, one at a time. Now, I want you to notice on the remote receivers, at this point, there are no lights on the front. The minute I plug this cable in, it provides power for that module to come to life, and it starts an internal power on self-test as well. It happens really quickly, but it'll check the electronics to make sure they're working okay, and it's checking the resolution of the monitors as well to let the transmitter know what type of media content it can accept, what kind of resolution it can display. And it takes a second or two to make that adjustment and do the handshake, but slowly you'll see the images come up from the media players. Now, the interesting thing here is that, again, that can be 300 feet away for 4K media content, and the only connection you've got between the transmitter and the receiver modules is that single LAN cable. So it really is just that easy to get it working. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you was the remote control, because this product provides an external infrared receiver for that and you can plug this in on the back. It's part of the infrared blaster kits. So if I plug that in on the back, it allows me to make adjustments to which input is sent to which output. Right now I've got all the number one input to number one, number two to number two, so they're pretty straightforward. But using the remote control, I can say set all of them to input number three. Let's see what happens. It's going to change all the images to the media player, which is going to come up in a second. And again, it takes a second or two to make that adjustment, but using the remote control, you can actually decide which of the inputs is sent to which of the outputs, which makes it incredibly easy to control. The reason this is important is because a lot of times you'll mount this inside of a cabinet and close a door, and the remote receiver is inside the front of this unit, and it won't actually be able to see the infrared signals being sent from this remote control. So having this connected allows you to extend that receiver outside of a cabinet and actually pick up those infrared remote control signals. So there's a lot of flexibility in how this configuration is done both in a cabinet and outside of a cabinet. And I love the fact that I can control the input versus output from the buttons on the front, the included remote control, or even through software connected to the back of the unit. And it really is just that simple to get it working. 
I hope this overview of the O-Ray UHD88-EXB300-K 8x8 HDMI matrix and extender kit was helpful. This product provides a very easy way of sharing eight different HDMI media sources with six remote locations up to 300 feet away in full 4K ultra high definition resolution over a single CAT6 or CAT7 cable. It also provides two local connections here for output, which gives you a total of eight inputs to eight outputs. And because it's a matrix, you have total control over which of those inputs is sent to which of those outputs using the buttons on the front of the product, the infrared remote control, or the connected software. The infrared blaster kits allow you to remotely control the content you're watching by collecting up the remote control signals at each of those remote locations and sending those back over the LAN cable to the primary site. And the fact that it uses power over cable technology means once you plug in the transmitter, all the receivers will receive their power over that same LAN cable. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.